my Mario Kart 9 wishlist video, which was in full production at the time the Nintendo Direct dropped. Well, that's in the bin now. Great. After the news drop regarding DLC finally coming to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, even if it does feel a few years too late, the prospect of Mario Kart 9 arriving anytime soon has been completely quashed. We're getting 48 new tracks across 6 waves releasing up until the end of 2023, and as much as I wanted a new game instead, I'm still excited for more Mario Kart. So I picked the brains of everyone in the Traction team, and threw in a few suggestions myself of course, and compiled a list in no particular order of tracks we'd like to see in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Booster Course DLC season. Hit subscribe if you're keen for more Mario Kart in the coming years, and some lovely Traction content to go along with it. Green shells at the ready, let's get to it. Let's kick things off with a classic, shall we? The third course of the Mushroom Cup in Mario Kart Wii was the charming Mushroom Gorge. While simple in the grand scheme of things, this was the first track you get to in Wii that featured chasms to yeet yourself down. So it's got enough of a challenge to not be overly bland. Plus, the music rocks and the port to Mario Kart 7 added a blue mushroom to enable gliding, which is something that Mario Kart 8 did with their track updates anyway, so they're halfway there already. Sticking with the Mushroom Cup in Wii, we're going from one track with a theme that slaps to another track with a theme that slaps. Taking things one step further in the difficulty space within the inaugural Wii Cup, Toad's Factory featured a more diverse track layout with more obstacles to overcome, conveyor belts to traverse, oh and the theme song absolutely slaps. Have I already said that? Switching things up from the perceptibly easy to the usually rather difficult, we've got a few rainbow roads present in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe already, including those from Super Mario Kart and Mario Kart 64, but if I had to pick another contender to throw into the ring, it would be the offering from Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS. It's definitely the most diverse iteration of the track, featuring the titular glassy road, but also multiple sections racing on planet rings, the surface of a moon, and quite a few more places to fall off. Giving it that graphical bump on the Switch over the 3DS would also just look spectacular. From one handheld to the other, and going back to a slightly more straightforward and fun vibe, look no further than Yoshi Falls. For what is a glorified oval, it's a lot of hectic fun once racing is underway. Similar to Baby Park's revamp in 8 Deluxe, this whole track could be simply put on a slant and made to be 0G the whole way round, with a few of the ramps on the split routes enabling gliding to make every lap feel different. This track was cracking on both DS and Wii, and we'd love to see it again. Mario gets all the attention in these games, so let's give the villains a few circuits to shine on. First up is Wario Stadium from Mario Kart 64, the second longest track in the game, featuring a myriad of jumps and tight corners, we're yet to see it again in a modern Mario Kart game, so why not now? Adding in the usual gliding, underwater and zero-g sections would make this track that little more interesting, but since it's such a long track in and of itself, it'll be great for that final round of a versus tournament. Going for the same motocross in a stadium vibe, Waluigi Stadium debuted back in Double Dash and did find itself ported over to the Wii. Though unlike its pseudo predecessor, this track doesn't need as much work to modernise it since it's got a far more interesting layout and more diverse obstacles to overcome, also while avoiding being nuked by a Yoshi lobbing a bob -omb. Fans are still clamouring for Waluigi in Smash, so we'll give him more screen time in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe instead. Waluigi Pinball is quite simply a banging track. Arguably one of the most whimsical settings in all of Mario Kart, the main question begs, are the car small or the pinball machine large? Taking this circuit online will definitely lead to some more interesting racing, and being flattened by a pinball from behind with no chance of dodging does make this a track to remember. Wrapping up our quadrilogy of questionable character quirks is this ridiculous masterpiece from Mario Kart Double Dash. As per in Wario Tracks, Wario Coliseum is a long lad, requiring only two laps to complete a quote-unquote full race. This thing is mental, and it deserves a remake simply because of how ridiculous it is, and it's actually a travesty that it's not been revisited yet. From the hectic to the quaint, Delfino Square is one of the most picturesque tracks grounded in normality, at least from a Mario Kart standpoint. As much as the architecture of Isle Delfino doesn't scream Need for Speed or Fast and Furious vibes, racing through the narrow, winding streets of the town and throwing yourself off a bridge definitely do. Speaking of bridges, while there is less yeeting, there is more traffic. Mushroom Bridge from Double Dash is quite the simple track layout, but having cars, buses, mushroom vehicles and bloody bombs on wheels makes it less so simple. With some dope shortcuts to add glide ramps on and rewarding those with balls big enough to drive up the sides of the bridge, we need more tracks with traffic that isn't the dull as anything Toad's Turnpike. Probably an unpopular opinion, I know. Fight me in the comments. More traffic you say? Well, Mushroom City has it in spades. Think of Moonview Highway from Mario Kart Wii, but with a more interesting setting and layout. Split routes are plenty here to make for some interesting racing, and as said, traffic on track always makes things more fun. Plus, night tracks are just awesome. 
Throwing this one in simply because it's one of my personal favorite tracks in all of Mario Kart, I need my Koopa Cape fix again. While going underwater was introduced properly in Mario Kart 7, Koopa Cape stuck you underwater through a warp pipe, and that's after jumping over gaps in a cliff, rushing through a winding stream of water, and throwing yourself off a waterfall. Just let me do it again, pretty please? All in all though, you don't need to have a track with ridiculous gimmicks to make it a fun race. Sometimes the most straightforward circuits can prove to have amazing item-based kart racing. N64 Royal Raceway anyone? One of the most straightforward in the suggestions today, I've definitely had a fair few great races on Mario Raceway from N64, and I'd love to see it again. Don't remove the big pipe at the end though, not like they would, really. DK has had some pretty dope tracks in the Mario Kart series in the past, and we've got three to talk about today. The first is the excellent DK Summit, or DK Snowball Cross, from Mario Kart Wii. Pretty much the precursors of the final stage of the also incredible Mount Wario, you know things are going to be good when the lap starts with you being fired from a cannon. The obstacles on the way down keep things interesting, though it would be even more so if they took a leaf out of Excite Bike Arena's book and randomized their order on each race. Speaking of being shot out of a cannon, Cannon to start the lap, always good, but the journey down the side of this grumpy-faced guy is a blast. The sheer number of trick ramps, pitfalls, and hairpin turns makes this a challenging track, and the rage-inducing moment of being biffed off the rickety bridge close to the lap ending is going to make those online tourneys even more interesting. This should be in every Mario Kart game. There, I said it. The finale in our Primate Trilogy today is DK's Jungle Parkway from Mario Kart 64. Racing through winding paths in the jungle is nothing new on this large lad's tracks, and while we don't have a cannon blasting us on our way at the start of the lap, we do have an abnormally large boost pad here. DK's tracks are always a great addition to the roster, and since we have a whole one track in the base version of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, we're in dire need of more. Think of Rainbow Road difficulty without the glitter, but with a cannon. It's a DK track in essence, but with more wigglers than monkeys. Maple Treeway is a track that is quite simply a delight from start to finish. Lots of places to fall off are juxtaposed by its lush, serene setting. Even the music brings energetic yet tranquil vibes. It's so peculiar and so lovely. That 8 Deluxe lighting engine would make this track sparkle, let me tell you. Things are getting spooky now as we head to Luigi's Mansion from Mario Kart DS. Yes, we've seen it as a battle stage on numerous occasions, but there aren't many tracks that feature trees that walk around, are there? It's basically the closest thing to the Haunted Mansion track in Disney Quest Magical Racing Tour, so of course I want it here. Rivers of blood, spooky hoose, booze everywhere. What's not to love? Give it some HD love. Night tracks are great, but sunset tracks? Oh boy, that aforementioned lighting engine in 8 Deluxe would have a field day with this one. Daisy Circuit from the Wii is a pretty inoffensive track all in all. Nice scenery, positively exotic location, double roundabouts with complete mayhem in the middle on the first lap, blind corner tunnels with bananas littered all over, long straight into a hairpin, makes for some hectic racing and close finishes. Bring it back. Finally, let's put a big one in. 8 Deluxe features a few point-to-point -point checkpoint tracks, so we'll throw another into the mix. Set on Woohoo Island as seen in Wii Fit and Wii Sports Resort, this is the track where you genuinely feel like you're just getting in the way of civilian life, lobbing bombs at poor me's just out for a coffee. While they have added a bunch of ramps and obstacles to the track to give it a bit more flavor than just being a road course, as I said earlier, sometimes the most straightforward tracks still have great racing to offer. Plus, a trip back to Woohoo Island wouldn't go amiss, would it? So those are our picks for tracks we'd like to see in the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. Are there any picks we've missed that you'd like to see, or is there one here you'd push straight to the top of the priority list? Let us know in the comments section below. Whatever your racing discipline, why not subscribe to Traction here on YouTube and check out Traction.gg for even more content. Thank you very much for watching, keep it pinned, and I'll see you next time.